Ranger's arsenal, and in turn combining more of the Zords to create the Triceramax Megazord. You may have noticed that I haven't commented very much on Cassidy and Devon. Some people like to compare them to Bulk and Skull, but there really is no comparison. Bulk and Skull, when they began, were bullies and didn't care about school, and as a result, their antics made a little bit more sense. Cassidy is just a selfish idiot because she wants to be a reporter? Devon, on the other hand, while a little clumsy and absent-minded, is intelligent and skilled. Frankly, I don't understand why he's practically Cassidy's slave unless he has a crush on her, but even that will only go so far considering the lengths he goes for her. It should be noted that with a lot of these seasons, the Sentai is still going on at the same time as the Power Rangers version is being written. As such, the writers don't know what they're going to be able to use with the Sentai footage or where the Sentai footage is going. Subsequently, when the Abba Ranger equivalent of the Triassic Ranger was brought up, it was believed that he was actually a sixth Ranger for the team, and there were some plans made for Devin to become the Triassic Ranger, but they dropped it when it was clear that it was just a powered-up Red Ranger. Anyway, Cassidy deliberately puts herself in harm's way on foolish and moronic errands just to get an exclusive story, interrupting the Rangers in the middle of a fight to try to get an interview. Hell, she once ignores the closed sign on Haley's Cafe for completely vapid reasons that rely on other people actually being there. Even though since the place is closed, logically no one would be there for her. However, as time goes on, Kira gets a job as an intern for a TV station, and Ethan, after accidentally hooking up with Cassidy for a blind date, actually befriends her. Through the mutual acquaintance, Kira manages to land Cassidy a reporting story or two for the station, and she's thankful to Kira for it. So afterwards, she remains shallow, but has a few deeper levels to her, and, well, makes her nicer. I just wouldn't compare the two to Bulk and Skull is all. After ten episodes of staying morphed, Tommy discovers a slime that they use to finally demorph him. However, the effect of it kicks in his Dino Gem power and turns him invisible. You know, come to think of it, ten episodes is the equivalent of, like, at least several days, if not a few weeks. So how is he able to eat? Maybe he could take off his helmet, but then why didn't he ever take it off while the others were around? Anyway, this part is resolved in the episode Fighting Spirit. Haley believes she's found a way to bring Tommy back to normal, but doesn't have a proper power source. Tommy suggests using his Dino Gem, but Haley is reluctant since it may be too powerful. When they try it, it overloads the system, shatters his Dino Gem, and knocks him into a coma. Still, he's visible again, so it did do what it was supposed to do. While the Rangers head off to deal with a powerful monster, Tommy is taken to a hospital. Inside Tommy's mind, however... Hello? Anybody? What is this place? Hello, Tommy. Remember me? Zero Ranger 5. So, guys, that was my reaction to Linkara's history of of Power Rangers Dino Thunder Part 1 video, so please be sure to comment down below, subscribe, hit the like button, press the notification bell to be notified about future videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye.